and welcome back to part eight of the Vulcan build where I'm hoping to get the airframe painted uh, in this particular video. Uh, the primer that I applied last time, the Mr. Surface of 1500 grey primer, has dried really nice and smooth. It's shown up one or two bits of uh, correction that I need to make where I've still got some seam lines showing. Uh, but I've done all those and it's ready for some paint. Uh, the paint that I'm going to be using is uh, Mr. Hobby's acrylic paint. Um, the scheme is a later 70s scheme of light aircraft grey, uh, medium sea grey and dark green, RAF dark green. So I'm hoping that uh, those colours will look the part once they're on the model. I'm going to paint the model in the usual sequence, so from light to dark. I'll be starting off with a light aircraft grey on the underside and then the top side uh, medium sea grey and green and when I'm doing the underside I'm also going to be painting the undercarriage doors and the Bombay doors at the same time and that's just to give a consistency of finish across the underside it's such a big expanse uh, that what could happen is if I painted the underside and then came back at a later date and did the undercarriage doors and Bombay door you get a slightly different shade and they look a bit odd so I'm going to do them all the same uh, and that'll just make sure that uh, the finish on the, all those parts is nice and consistent. The intensity of the colour is nice and consistent as well. The primer, as I said, has dried nicely. It's just revealed one or two little areas, which I picked up actually on the close-up photographs that I did at the end of part seven. I noticed some seam lines that needed correcting on the foot front edge of the wing uh, and one or two other areas that needed some work doing. But apart from that, we're all ready to go, I think. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the undercarriage doors out and the Bombay doors that I'm going to need, get those primed, and then we can move on and get the underside painted. Okay, so let's get the parts that we need uh, prepared. So we need, these are the main gear doors, or at least the after side of them. Then we've got the nose gear doors and the main wheels. This is the entrance hatch which is also in light aircraft grey so I'll have that as well. And then the Bombay doors themselves. The Bombay doors on the Vulcan were separated into two doors per side. So Airfix uh, reproduced that. This is an area where, of course, doing the blue steel option would have saved the work of doing all the Bombay and preparing these Bombay doors. So in a sense, it would have been quite a bit easier to do the blue steel version. As usual, I'll just go around all of these parts and make sure the sprue gates are all cleaned up and get them in a coat of primer and and we can get them painted along with the underside. I recall this uh, hatch at the front of the Bombay door. Uh, that gave us access to the Bombay when uh, the doors were closed, which is quite often. And it just saved having to engage all the hydraulics to open the Bombay door. We could just get in through this little hatch at the front. <coughs> There are a couple of uh, ejector pin marks on the back of these rear main gear doors. And I think it's just worth scraping those just to get rid of them. Just a curved knife blade will uh, get rid of those. Just make a neater finish to the undercarriage. I think the undercarriage leg will probably hide them to some extent, but uh, it's only a couple of minutes work just to scrape those out. They're not too deep. There's one just on the inside of the entrance hatch as well. So I'll do the same with that. Yep, so they're fine. All ready to use. I'm just going to check fit 
these uh, Bombay doors just to see how they go in so you can see the outboard door which is the thinner one just sits down and gives the impression that it's folded underneath so uh, that's okay the only thing with these Bombay doors is you've got to be very careful not to get them mixed up because they will only fit one way I thought I was going to have to do something with these ejector pin marks but they're actually hidden down the inside of the Bombay when the uh, assembly is complete so we don't have to worry about them which is just as well so that's the starboard door and how it should look when it's finished it is possible to put the other incorrect door there's no uh, key on these parts really so it would be possible to get them mixed up and if you did that you can see that the locator pins are at slightly different positions so if you get the wrong one on you're not going to be able to get it into the model so it's worth just uh, paying attention to that so I'm just checking all these doors to make sure that they're all going to fit okay and so far there's not going to be any problems with them ready to paint the underside now so I'm just going to reinsert the closed undercarriage doors from the airfix kit just to use those as uh, ready-made masks really just to protect the white on the undercarriage base they don't have to be a perfect fit just as long as uh, we can cover the bay up itself they're a reasonable fit they're gonna do the job so they're a nice fit and you can see I've already got the Bombay doors in so what I'm going to do now is put the doors that I'm going to be painting so these are the open Bombay doors and I'm just going to blue tack those onto the bottom of the aeroplane so just a couple of pieces of blue tack and then you can position the doors roughly into their positions and I'll do the same with the undercarriage doors you can see that I've taped all the doors that I'm going to be using onto the underside and that's so that when uh, I paint the underside I'm going to get a consistent finish on the uh, door parts I think quite often uh, when you paint undercarriage doors separately it is possible to get a slight difference in tone and it does look as though they've been added afterwards as an afterthought so doing it like this hopefully we'll get a more even coverage and a more consistent coverage as well so that's ready to go I'm going to mix up some of the Mr Hobby acrylic this is number 332 light aircraft grey so we'll be doing the underside in that you notice that I don't uh, do any pre-shading I know that a lot of people these days do pre-shading on models uh, but it's not a technique that I'm a big fan of really uh, I think it can sometimes lead to a slightly uh, unrealistic effect what I'll be doing with this is some panel line wash uh, and some streaking on the underside with some oils uh, I don't think that it needs any more than that and what the pre-shading will do is just over enhance I think the uh, panel lines on the model I don't want them to be showing up that much so it's just a personal preference I know that people do like uh, these new techniques that you're seeing on videos these days with either pre-shading or people uh, sometimes uh, a more recent thing is to paint the uh, base coat in black and then lighten it with the marbling effect and but it's not uh, a method that I favor at the moment 
So uh, we'll see how we get on with just a plain colour coat and the panel line wash and some local weathering. So uh, we'll get that paint mixed up and we can get it applied. So I'm thinning the paint with Mr. Colour uh, Leveling Thinner. And I like to mix base coats about 50-50 thinner to paint. I don't uh, get too hung up about the precise proportions. Okay, so I'll load the airbrush up. The uh, pressure on the compressor is about 15 psi. Okay, so let's get some nice even coats on this underside. See, there's not that much difference between this uh, light aircraft grey and the base primer. Okay, so that's uh, just the first coat. You can see that in one or two places like here uh, the airbrush has been spitting I need to just give it a clean but uh, I've got some spits on there so I'm just need to I just need to let that dry thoroughly and then just give it a light rub down before I uh, do the second coat it's difficult to tell on the camera where the primer ends and the top coat starts but uh, the light aircraft grey is on there, believe me. So I'm just going to leave that to dry thoroughly. And as I said, I'll come back and sort those paint spits out uh, whilst I'm doing the second coat on this. Okay, so we've got a uh, second coat on there. And with the paint being so thin, there's no danger really of uh, hiding any of the detail. As long as we don't put too heavy a coat on. The Mr. Hobby uh, acrylic paint dries to a satin finish really. It's a nice, uh, I'd describe it as an eggshell finish. It's not quite decal ready I don't think, but uh, it's certainly nice and smooth. So uh, I'm just going to let that dry for overnight and then I'll just check it in the morning, make sure that uh, there's nothing else to do on that. but. I'm pretty happy that we've got a nice even coat on that underside and as you can see there's no difference here between the Bombay doors uh, and the rest of the underside and also the uh, gear doors here as well so a uh, nice consistent finish over all the separate parts okay so that's the light aircraft grey and you might be able to just pick out that I've added one or two drops of white to the light aircraft grey mix out of the jar and just gone back in into the centre of the panels just to lighten them a little bit it's barely noticeable uh, but it just breaks up this very large uh, expanse of plain grey colour so it just gives a bit of very subtle variation in the tone uh, without being too stark and in one or two areas I did get it a little bit too strong so I've just gone over with the base colour again a very thinned out uh, mix of the base colour just to blend all that in a little bit and it's just given a little bit of variation to that uh, underside so the next thing to do is to mask these undersurfaces off uh, and make a start with the top surface camouflage 
one thing that you might have noticed if you're building the uh, model is these panels here, these uh, what were uh, radar panels and Airfix only give us the engraving for this one on the starboard side uh, but my photographs of XL392 show that there are uh, panels on both sides so I've used a circle template here just to carefully uh, mark out the position uh, of this port side uh, engraving and just cut it with a very sharp needle just to match it up. So I'm not sure why Airfix only did that on one side. As far as I can see aircraft carried that on both sides. Uh, there was some variation in the uh, radar and radio fit on these aircraft over the years so uh, I might be wrong on that but certainly uh, XL392 for this period had uh, the panel on both sides. Okay we'll just mask off the undersides now uh, and I've already done the starboard side here and you can see on the front edge here that the uh, upper surface camouflage will wrap around the wing and the demarcation line towards the wing tip just flares out so that it meets the edge of the wing tip just round this bend here so you can see how it just flares away here on this outside edge the intakes again the camouflage obviously goes inside the intake uh, both above and below uh, and again on the underside of the wing it just extends slightly underneath like that and then meets the forward fuselage here inside the splitters. On the tail cone we've obviously got the camouflage just running into the tail fillet here and then around the back of this radar bulge here at the back. This is an area where it's just worth checking your references uh, for the aircraft that you're building and the date that you're building it. Sometimes this housing at the back was all the upper colour so no light aircraft grey on the bottom half of it but on my particular uh, aircraft it does extend around the back of the tail cone. So just check uh, which aircraft you're building and the date that you're building it because it did vary. So you'll notice that I've used different sizes of tape uh, on this masking for the wing and that's just because sometimes the tape has to conform uh, to some of these kinks in the wing and we need some nice smooth uh, circular masks for the edge of the intake here so I've used a circle cutter to cut that radius there uh, just to make sure that it conforms with the shape of the intake so we'll do the port side now. So I'm using this 3mm tape for the nose. This is good tape because it has these protective plastic discs uh, and it just keeps the edge of the tape nice and crisp. Uh, if you just leave masking tape out it sometimes collects bits of dust and dirt on the outside uh, and that transfers when you use it and you get a ragged edge uh, to the masking which is why I always uh, either use this or keep my Tamiya tape in the dispensers. Once you've bought one of the dispensers you can obviously buy refills so you don't have to buy one in a dispenser all the time uh, but that just helps keep the tape nice and crisp on the outside so I would recommend keeping your masking tape in these containers. So obviously uh, the thing when masking the second half or the second side uh, of a camouflage scheme is to make sure that the masking is the same on both sides so it matches. 
So um, you can get very close by eye just uh, taking a reference against one of the panel lines but sometimes I use some calipers just to make sure that uh, the spacing is the same. Obviously just burnish that down. We don't want any paint getting on the underside. So next I'll put this strip on which goes from the wing tip all the way down to this angle here uh, in one piece and again we're using the three millimeter for that. So I'm positioning this piece so that it runs along the panel line at this point. That gives us our line if you like along the front edge of the wing. And then here the tape needs to bend back and again follow the line to the wing tip. And this is where the 3mm tape comes in because uh, that just enables you to go around that little kink here. And when we get to the wing tip, I just want to flare it ever so slightly. Just get it to hopefully match the starboard side. So it just curved round there at that point. So that's uh, most of the front of the wing. Now I want to go from this point just uh, outboard of the intake to the to the piece of masking tape that we've already fitted and I'll use a piece of standard six millimeter tape to do that and the reason why I'm using six millimeter tape at this point is because it's enough to keep a nice straight line on its own you can just push it along so I'll put the front of the tape here and just moved it along until it's met the three millimeter tape that we just applied. So now I want to cut uh, some masking tape using the circle cutter just to give us this radius here to conform with the radius of the intake. Uh, and also another little piece further up just to give us that nice gentle curve so it matches the profile of the intake as we've got here. And then we just want a section of that, probably uh, 90 degrees. And I'm taking the outside of the mask. And when we fit that to the intake at this point, it follows the line of the, it follows the shape of the intake there. I use circle cutters a lot when I'm masking up because it's just far easier to get a nice radius on these masks rather than trying to bend a piece of masking tape around there and then you just join them up afterwards as we're going to do now. So another piece of tape with a larger radius has just connected those two pieces together. You can see how that's following the line or the shape of the intake there. The next piece will run along from this radius here to the edge of the splitter plate and I'm back using the three millimeter for this. The last piece uh, connects the splitter uh, to the leading edge of the wing and its junction with the forward fuselage here at this point. So uh, I think that's the trickiest bit of the masking to do is to get the tape along the leading edge here under the intake uh, and around the splitter. So that's all done. It's nice and straight so we'll uh, get the rest of the underside mast off. Uh, and I will cover this entirely because I don't want any risk of any overspray on the underside. So I'll use some paper masks and masking tape around the edge just to make sure everything's blocked off. I'm not going to waste these scraps on the cutting mat. Perfectly alright to use. 
This piece of tape here, by the way, uh, and I had a piece on the bomb aimer's blister here. That was just to protect the underside paint when it was standing on the bench. It's easy to scuff uh, paint off on exposed areas like that when the model's sitting on the bench. So that just gives it some protection. And now that I've got the model on its back and I'm working on the underside, I've got some tape on the top of the fin there. Uh, that's not to protect any paint because I haven't got paint on there, but it's just to stop the very thin top of the fin getting bent. Okay, so that's the perimeter of the wing sealed off. So I am going to put some paper masks to completely cover the underside of the model. Uh, and that's because even though you're painting the top side, uh, paint can swirl over the uh, top of the wing. Uh, and it will just leave a little film, a very faint film on the underside. And you'll notice when you take the masking tape off, you'll get an edge. Uh, a dusty kind of edge on the underside. Uh, which uh, you don't want really. So... Uh, it's worth just taking the time just to uh, mask the whole of the underside off so there's no risk of getting that paint uh, where you don't want it. Okay, so that's the undersides completely masked off. I think I better order some more masking tape. Okay, I'll just give that a quick check round just to make sure I've not left any little gaps which will be really annoying when you take the masking off and find little spots of the top side colour on the underside. So it's just worth having a quick look around just to make sure you've captured everything. The next thing before I do the top side uh, I need to mask off the canopy because I want to paint the canopy at the same time as the rest of the fuselage. Uh, the reason for that is that I want to get the same paint shade uh, consistently all the way across the model. Sometimes if you paint canopies separately uh, you can find that the tone is ever so slightly different and you can tell that it's been painted uh, after the rest of the model. So I always do my canopies uh, at the same time as the main fuselage paint. So this is the Airfix canopy and it's a really nice fit to the rest of the fuselage. And because of that, I can just tack it in place whilst I do the painting. Uh, then remove it because it has some decal to go on the inside. Uh, so I can paint that, take it off, do the deckling and then reinstall it nearer towards the end of the build after the uh, final top coat of varnish has gone on. So the first thing to do with this is to mask the windows off. I don't have a canopy mask for this, so I'm going to have to make my own, which is easy enough to do. For uh, masking this canopy off, I'm making my own masks. Uh, I don't think it's worth really buying a ready-made mask set for the amount of windows on this uh, model. And they're an e easy enough to make yourself. So I'm just going to use some uh, scraps of tape and I'll do this little triangular side window as an example. So we'll just lay some tape on and I'll burnish it down into the frame. The frames on this Airfix canopy are quite uh, strong you can see them quite easily. So I just burnish the tape down into the corners like so and then I'll just use a drafting pencil to mark the edge of the mask out. You can tape that off. Just cut the mask out. I'm going to use a steel rule for this just to get a nice straight edge. And just reapply it 
back onto the canopy. We've got a slightly trickier job here with these two side windows because uh, Airfix have moulded these windscreen wipers uh, over the window so we need to mask around those and interestingly we're going to have to make a windscreen wiper because they've missed the one on the central window here. There were three on the Vulcan so we'll make those up from some wire later on. So I'll do the rest of this uh, masking using that same technique and then we can just tack this into place on the model ready for painting. Okay, I've given that a very light rub down just as a final pre preparation for the first of the camouflage top coats, which will be uh, Mr. Hobby H335, which is a medium sea grey. And I'm just going to give this an overall very flat coat, no uh, pre shading, just to get a base colour down. Then I can just add uh, a bit of white to the base mix. Uh, and do the centres of the panels like I did on the underside uh, before we uh, mask that up for the green. So let's get this medium C grey on first. Having uh, masked off the undersides very carefully, we mustn't forget to do the wrap over camouflage on the underside. The difficult thing is to find somewhere to hold the model while you're doing that. Okay, so that's a decent uh, solid coat of colour on the upper surfaces. So I'm going to let that dry thoroughly for probably five or six hours now. Uh, with the lacquer thinners, the Mr. Hobby lacquer thinners, it does dry pretty quickly. But it doesn't do any harm just to leave things a little bit longer than uh, normal or recommended, just to make sure that everything's properly dry. You can see that masking up the underside uh, is pretty important on this. It would it would be easy to get overspray onto the light aircraft grey uh, and spoil the finish on the underside. So that's it, we'll leave that alone for a while and then we can come back and do some uh, lightning coats uh, on the interior of the panels just to give it a bit of definition. Okay so I've let that dry for probably four or five hours. It's dried to a nice smooth finish, I'm happy with it. Uh, so the next step is just to give a bit of variation to the grey and to do that I've just mixed a little bit of white into the base uh, Mr Hobby colour just to lighten it a very small amount and I'll use that to just go into the centre of all the panels uh, and just give a bit of variation just to break the block of colour up. It's uh, probably not going to be possible to see this on camera because the effect is so subtle, the difference in colour is so little that uh, you probably won't be able to catch it on camera. 
but uh, I'll just carry on doing that. So just the center of the panels, it's barely visible to the naked eye. We don't want to have a massive patchwork effect. So I'll just carry on around the model, just fill the panels in with this lighter color. And then we'll come back and give an overall coat of the original uh, medium C gray, uh, just to blend it all back in again. Okay, so it might just be possible to see the effect of that coat uh, here on the elevens uh, on the control surfaces. You might just be able to pick out the slight difference in tone there. So what I need to do now is just to come back with some of the base medium C grey and just blend that in a tiny little bit. There's one or two areas where it's a bit stark and a bit obvious. Uh, so that'll just uh, tone it back a bit. I don't want to do too much with the base colour because it'll just eliminate the patchy effect that uh, I've managed to build up there. So it's uh, a case of just keeping a close eye on how the colour is changing and doing lots of blending because the paler colour is so little different to the base colour that it's very easy to lose it all again. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm happy with the patchy appearance that that's given us and as I said I think it's probably pretty difficult to pick up on the camera. It's best seen here on the elevens and probably you can see it a little bit on the rudder and fin as well. So I'm going to leave that overnight to dry and then hopefully we can get it masked up uh, and ready for the green so that'll be more masking tape in use. Okay so the greys had uh, overnight to dry now and you can see that I've made a start in masking the uh, camouflage off on the starboard wing. Uh, and for that I've been using this white vinyl Tamiya tape. I think it's about 3mm, something like that. And I'm using the white because it enables you to uh, stretch these pieces of tape into these very sharp uh, curves and get nice smooth curves on them. The yellow masking tape, even the three millimeter yellow masking tape, which is here, uh, is too stiff to follow those sharp curves. So the white tape is much better for this application. The other thing that you'll notice is I've got these strips of the yellow Tamiya tape uh, in certain areas, and these are the areas that are going to remain grey. And I do that on a complicated scheme like this because it's very easy to get the grey and the green mixed up when you're doing the masking. So you can find, if you're not uh, concentrating, that, that you actually lay the tape out on the wrong side of the uh, camouflage demarcation and get it all mixed up. So this just reminds me all the time uh, which is the grey and which is the green for when I put the next piece of vinyl tape on. So there's not uh, much in this really. Uh, I'm following roughly the airfix scheme, but my particular aircraft was a little bit different to this XL392 uh, in the period that I'm modeling. So I do have to make one or two alterations to that, particularly in the intake demarcation here, where the demarcation between the gray and the green is about halfway along the intake. Uh, it's not marked out like that at all on the Airfix kits. So this is more accurate for the particular aircraft that I'm building. So the schemes did vary a little bit from aircraft to aircraft. So you do need uh, really to have some good reference photographs of the particular airframe that you're making. Uh, and they varied a little bit, the uh, patterns, because these 
uh, schemes when the aircraft were repainted and the aircraft were always repainted at major servicing uh, the schemes were laid out from a general drawing but the painters just copied that drawing roughly onto the airframe following more or less the same pattern that was laid out in the drawing uh, but because they were laying it out freehand uh, it did vary from one aeroplane to another and they did it in exactly the same way as we're doing it here they used masking tape an awful lot of masking tape admittedly but it was masking tape that they laid out uh, to form the camouflage pattern and then they filled it in with uh, large rolls of paper so not that much different really to how we're doing it here uh, on this model the difference uh, is that the paint wasn't applied with a spray gun uh, the painters used uh, fairly large rollers just like if you were decorating your house and you'd paint the walls using rollers uh, these aeroplanes were painted in exactly the same way as that and because of that method the demarcation uh, of this camouflage was hard edged or at least it was in the late 70s and uh, early 80s uh, it may they may have had a feathered edge earlier on in the uh, airplane's life but but certainly at this time it was a hard edged uh, scheme uh, as I said because the uh, demarcations were laid out with masking tape so I'll carry on and do a little bit more on this port wing I'm not going to cover the whole of the masking, it will take uh, too long. But just some general principles when using this uh, white tape, this vinyl tape. So the first thing I'm going to do is just lay out very roughly a quantity of tape that I'm likely to need uh, for this particular piece of the pattern. So I'm not burnishing this down at all I'm just getting enough so that I know that it's going to go all the way I don't want to be joining this halfway through the application so there's a piece of tape there that's going to do this uh, forward piece of the camouflage and this masking tape uh, works on these tight bends if you stretch it a little bit as you're applying it So I'm just pulling the tape and pressing it down at the same time. I'm just trying to avoid getting any uh, sharp kinks in this. I want some nice smooth uh, transitions from one curve to the next. You see just pulling the tape enables you to get these nice tight curves. So you can see how the tape has coped, particularly around here with these very sharp bends. So it's uh, ideal, this tape, for this kind of application. And I'll just mark that out as a grey area. So I don't get mixed up with the next section of the camouflage. So I'm going to carry on with the rest of the airframe. And then we can think about getting some of the green on. To apply this piece of masking here, I've... Uh, copied the roundel that's going to be located in this position uh, and that's because on my photographs this demarcation here follows around the edge of the roundel so this photocopy is of the decal that I'm going to be using and it enables me when I position that and just tape it into place where the decal is going to be fitted it just enables me to fit this camouflage around the front edge of the roundel and also my photographs show that this 
uh, demarcation here falls short of the back of the roundel as well. If I followed the FX instructions for the camouflage scheme, this uh, green section would run into the uh, roundel, which won't be correct. This technique of uh, just copying the decal that you're going to be eventually using uh, works really well if you need to mark out uh, camouflage demarcations or painting demarcations anywhere near the decal. So I'll just remove that paper now and I can carry on and do the rest of the marking out for this section of camouflage. And obviously I've left enough here to wrap around the inside of the intake. Okay, so that's the airframe uh, masked up, ready for the green. So hopefully that's uh, done the job. I've been round and checked a couple of times uh, just to make sure that uh, I've covered everything. And I think I have. Uh, but obviously it's a large airframe to cover. And there's every chance that I've missed something here and there. Uh, so we may have to do some touch-ups. I hope not, but uh, it's pretty likely. So I'm going to go do the green now, use the same method, give it an overall coat, and then I'm going to lighten it, this time with some yellow rather than white. White added to green tends to make it look a bit minty uh, rather than just paler. So I'm going to use yellow. That should give a better result to lighten the green. So I'll go over, I'm going to do that all over at the spray booth rather than at the bench. Uh, so I'll come back when I've done that and we'll maybe be able to start to do some unmasking I hope. Okay that's the green on and I've lightened that a little bit uh, in a patchy way with some yellow in it. I'm just going to see how this has turned out. So get the masking off. It's very likely that I'm going to have to do some touch-ups with this. It's interesting when you get the green onto this aeroplane. I was a bit concerned about the grey being too dark but against the green it really looks the right sort of shade. So it's just the contrast with the green and grey just alters the appearance of it altogether. So the masking's off and I think overall it's a pretty good result. I uh, need to do one or two little touch-ups. I've missed a tiny little spot here at the front and a slightly larger uh, spot here where I've missed the masking. But that'll be easy enough to fix. I'll just leave that tape on for the moment while I fix that. The intakes have masked up really well, uh, particularly this curve here. The line on that has come out just how I want it. So uh, that looks good. So I'll do those one or two touch-ups 
uh, and then give it an overall coat of uh, gloss varnish just to seal everything in and level everything up. Uh, and then we might be able to start thinking about doing some decals. Okay, so I'm happy with the painting. I've just done one or two little touch-ups. I've fixed the uh, overspray at the nose here. So I'm going to let that dry uh, for a couple of days probably now. Uh, give it a coat of gloss varnish. Uh, and then hopefully we'll be ready to do some decals in the next part of the series, in part nine. So I'll pick up again on the Vulcan uh, with the decaling work uh, in that next video. In the meantime, everybody, uh, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time for the next part of the Vulcan. Bye for now. Hello everybody and welcome back.